Hello everyone, welcome to Raj Malhotra IAS Institute. Today we are going to talk about a very sensitive issue which has been having an ethical undertone. And the topic that we are going to talk today about is the hiding of the true COVID-19 statistics. This particular topic has an ethical undertone and I have deliberately linked it with the ethical term that is transparency. Friends, if you hide the true number and give a fake number, it is as good as you are murdering the transparency or you are killing the transparency. So in this video, we are now going to talk about that what is data manipulation? What is the purpose of data manipulation? What is openness? What is transparency? And what is the impact if you hide the transparency? What is the importance of transparency? What is transparent information? So we will be looking into all the possible dimensions of this topic that is hiding the true COVID-19 statistics and related with openness and transparency. So let us begin. Friends, if you have been an ardent follower of the newspaper, you must have been coming across a lot of statistics or a lot of news that is related to under-reporting of COVID-19 data by India. In the snippet on the screen, you can see that there, this is a particular uh, newspaper snippet that says that official dates far lower than the COVID victims cremated. Of recently, if you look at the cremations that have been carried out in different cremation grounds across the India, across the country, the number of deaths that have been reported in the official statistics is far, far fewer than what is actually reported by the verbal or the oral narration of the people who have been carrying out cremations in these cremation grounds. Similarly, if you look at this particular uh, this snippet, the second snippet, it says that fertilities on paper versus fertilities on fire. So if you look at the fertilities that are given on paper, there are fewer, very, very less compared to the one that have been provided by the cremation grounds. Certainly the information that has been provided by the cremation ground that does not stand the chance of authenticity because every now and then people exacerbate or uh, the, official the official statisticians, they do not accept the oral narration by the people who are carrying out the cremations. They just go by the hospital records and I don't know but there are serious allegations put against the hospitals that uh, they are under-reporting the data. You see the third image, this is of the New York Times uh, newspaper and this jostled the world, this rocked the world and maligned Indian image across the global frontiers. This newspaper article has given a very, uh, very, uh, you can say shocking news headline to India that as COVID ravages India, true toll is undercounted. So almost every country in the world today witnessed India as the country that tried to sabotage the official figures which was attacked, which was earlier only limited to China. But this time it is very much used openly and presently for India. So it becomes a true uh, credibility crisis for Indian scenario across the globe and India's image or repute has a reputation has been somewhere maligned. We are now equated with the countries that suppress the data, which includes countries like some of the authoritarian countries like, the Ch like China. All right, so let us go ahead now. And we are now going to link under-reporting of data or under-reporting of information with a very important value that has been given by the Committee on Standards in Public Life. If you try to recall from your ethics syllabus of UPSC, Committee on Standards in Public Life is popularly known as the Nolan Committee. It was the committee that was set up by the Prime Minister of United Kingdom to provide the guiding principles or to provide the foundational values of any general public service and it gave the seven fundamental values or that became the seven sacrosanct principles which are also known as the foundational values of public life. The first that is selflessness that we are not going to talk in this video. The second is integrity that is again out of scope of this video right now. Then third is objectivity. We are not going to talk here right now today about objectivity. The fourth is leadership. Fifth is honesty. Sixth is accountability. Today we are not going to cover these six values. Today what we are going to cover is the seventh foundational value and the seventh foundational value, my dear friends, is openness. So let us look into what is openness. Now, openness basically means that the government is open. 
the government is willing to give disseminate its information to the people suo moto or willingly so if we try to summarize the core principles of openness the first principle is that people have right to know the information that the government possess this information must be true this information must be timely delivered and most important this information it's not that the people should come and ask the government that give us information rather the government should suo moto deliver the information by itself this is the characteristic features of openness that is that's the information on the platter people come and have a look at it this is an example of an open government now openness gives rise to a foundational value that is known as transparency transparency emerges from the principle of openness openness makes the information readily available to the people it facilitate that people can seek information from the government and this becomes the basis of transparency or this becomes the hallmark of a transparent government if the people think that they should have access to the information and they seek information from the government a transparent government will therefore be obliged to respond to this demand of the public the government shall oblige the demand of the public to know the information and information shall not be sensitive information and an information that is threat to public order you know along with transparency and openness there is another foundational value that is known as confidentiality that is in public service any information that is sensitive information that deals with international relations that deals with public order so to protect these kind of crucial elements of public life the information can be withheld but that is an exception that the information is precisely sensitive and threat to public order and that information can be put under the envelope of confidentiality and that may not be revealed in the public life but otherwise the government should put on platter all other information and if any person any citizen of the country is willing to have access to that information then the government should oblige such a demand this is what is transparency so openness breeds transparency now the government is being you can say blamed or the government is being accused of data manipulation so what is data manipulation data manipulation basically refers to the fact that the government is hiding the true data or government is artificially inflating the data which is good that helps the government go for chest thumping or the data that is bringing disrepute to the government the data that brings disrepute to the government that data is artificially deflated what is the purpose of data manipulation so let's look at the purpose of data manipulation the first purpose is that data manipulation help in hiding the embezzlement it helps the government to hide its failure it help it to prevent maligning of its image so data manipulation is a tool to hide the embezzlement shame on the part of the government data manipulation is often carried out with a purpose for fake chest thumping and particularly if you have that 56 inch chest then you need it to thump really hard and for that you sometimes need to go for fake data or data manipulation it is also used all right it is also used for oh, pardon me um it is also used for hiding the failure or covering up of the failure so these are the basic purposes of what is known as data manipulation now you know transparency just by the government calling itself transparent or just by the government providing you the information is not transparency transparency is very much related with the nature of information or you can say transparency is directly related with the nature or the quality of information and when i say that transparency is related to nature of information and if any of the parameter of the nature of information is compromised then my dear friends transparency is not upheld following are the nature of information which must be fulfilled 
All right, following are the nature of information which must be fulfilled for transparency to upheld. The first is that the information must be readily available. That is, one can readily see the information available to him or her. Second, the information must be readily accessible, that one can access the information which is readily available. Third, the information must be timely delivered. If the time is taken, uh, if the government is taking too long to provide the information, it is as good as the government is denying the information. And denial of information is not transparency. All right, apart from this, adequate and true information must be provided to the people. Any kind of fake information makes the very purpose of transparency not being fulfilled. So if the information is readily available, if it is readily accessible, if it is timely delivered to the people and if it is adequate and true, only then you can say that the transparency is upheld. Any compromise on above nature, any of the above nature of information being compromised, transparency is hampered or you can say transparency is killed. So let us see what does this imply. This implies that data manipulation, it hampers the authenticity of information. Even if all other dimensions are fulfilled, but authenticity is hampered because of data manipulation, the transparency is murdered, the transparency is killed. Such an information is of no good use. It is of no good use. Alright, neither this is transparency nor this information can be of any good use. Rather, we should not talk about the use of such an information, an information which is manipulated, it kills the transparency but at the same time it also brings a lot of negatives or harm to the nation. So let us look at the harms of the manipulated COVID-19 data that is the murdered, uh, murdered transparency. The first negative impact is that it results into erosion of public faith and trust. Second, it ensures that the adequate response is not provided. It results into poor response and sub subsequent poor policy formulation. When we underreport the data, then the people who are responsible to prepare for this kind of debacle, even they default because they were not given the true data. So it results into poor response and policy formulation. Then it also results into poor estimation. For example, recently many of the claims that were put forward by when would, when would India reach the speak of the second COVID-19 wave, nowhere we could get the nowhere we could get the true, um, now you can say estimation, because the government that provided uh, the government which provided uh, the data that was a fake data, and therefore even the top shots in case of estimation such as the Stanford University, such as Michigan University, they all defaulted because the data was not true, and therefore their model did not turn out to be. The correct one. So it results into poor estimation. Then if you do not provide the true data particularly re uh, related to a crisis like COVID-19, the people will become complacent. You see, because uh, of the speeches like that India has uh, fought the COVID-19 battle, the COVID-19 battle is over, that people rush to the political rallies, people rush to the uh, religious congregations such as um, the Kumbh Mela. All right, all these things have, uh, are the product of the complacent attitude which was ensured by the fake data or the wrong information to the public. Then, fake data also bring, brings global disrepute. Uh, Our reputation globally has gradually, or you can say even not gradually, it has to a great extent has decreased today because of the under-reporting of data. You are hiding the true number. You are hiding the true number not from anybody else but your own people. And this is bringing global disrepute. disrepute. It is actually making India to be represented as a closed economy, closed society, what earlier China used to be. All right. Then fake data results into moral corruption of the government. A moral government will never play wrong with the data but a morally corrupt government will always try to manipulate the data try to inflate the data that is useful to it and so uh, you can say suppress the data that brings some kind of question mark on its discharge of functions then it also results into poor accountability because accountability is with respect to the data that the people know and if the data is fake then accountability is of no good use 
false. All right. So even so we can say that if the information is not true, it kills many of the foundational values such as transparency, accountability and openness. So that's why the true authentic character of the information is very important from the ethical perspective for a government. Now, let us see, is India alone to blame? Well, no, my dear friends, India alone is not to be blamed because almost all the countries that were experiencing some kind of severe COVID hit, they have underreported the data. For example, China. World recognizes China as a country which is shrouded in mystery. People have no access to uh, the social media. So that is a very closed society. That's a very closed economy. And people have people globally recognize that. So China has been overly and again and again at various point of time, not just for COVID, but for almost everything. It has been under reporting the data that harm Chinese image or inflating the data that bolsters Chinese image. So China is one of the countries that is going for under reporting the data. United States is no exception, nor is the United Kingdom, nor is Italy, and nor is India. All the countries that have experienced some severe burnt off, you can say, the COVID-19, uh, they have tried to underreport the deaths, they have tried to underreport the data. And you know, in case of India, many of the experts, they believe that if they are reporting 4,000 daily deaths, it can be as high as 20,000. If they are reporting 3 lakh per day case, it can be as high as 9 to 10 lakh per day. So my dear friends, things are really serious, things are really bad. So transparency is very important. Rather, I should say, I should rephrase that honest, uh, transparent, true information is very important for transparency, accountability and openness to be established. And I will conclude this lecture by a famous quote from Dalai Lama about transparency that a lack of transparency result in distrust and deep sense of insecurity. And right now, people need their insecurity to be alleviated because these times are precarious, these times are testing and these times are tough. And at that time, we cannot feel dished by our own government. And this lack of transparency has only eroded our trust in the government. Also, it has increased our insecurity manifold. It's not that great people like Dalai Lama come out and speak these kind of statements for no good use. They have a lot of hidden meaning. Try to ponder over and I hope that through this video you are able to understand that what is the importance of a true information and when true information is manipulated, it kills transparency, it kills democracy, it kills trust and it kills the very foundational values on which public service is found. So that's all from my side. Have a great day ahead, whatever be the time. Greetings of the day. This was Akash Sherawat. Have a great day. Take care. Bye.